Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Another entry here based on your suggestions. Uh, it's been a couple of days since the last one because it's been a pretty long work week this week so I haven't had much chance to work on the videos but being now Sunday I've been able to go ahead and free some time and then that way take a look again at your suggestions. This one is another great example of a cryptid taking on a life of its own and then even after the fact that it's been proven to be 100 percent a hoax it still remains a hallmark within the place that it was found so it is very very cool to talk about this it reminded me of one of the cryptids i talked about earlier this year the cardiff giant which was also another hoax but still it's a it's a particular draw to this day because of the folklore and because of the history tied to it. This one has to do with a cryptid that's called the Hodag, which you're looking at a picture of here. And it's a it's amazing when I was reading the history with this to see how how so much of it was able to be proven as it being a hoax and yet flash forward to today and there are still festivities there are towns uh, places there are buildings everything a lot of things linked to this creature as a dedication to it even though it's a hundred percent oaks uh, so you you'll hear all this information here throughout the next coming minutes so what is the hodag well before it was proven to be a hoax the hodag was purportedly like a small almost bulldog sized creature that you'll see uh, clearly you're seeing the picture of here it was described as the following it had quote unquote the head of a frog the grinning face of a giant elephant. I don't really see too much of an elephant there, but that's how it was described. Thick, short legs set off by huge uh, claws. And then the back of a dinosaur. And then a long tail with spears at the end. So had this creature truly been a real creature, like a living creature, it would have definitely been a terrifying creature to encounter considering everything that you see here. I mean this is one of those creatures that's kinda like a almost like the real life wolverines, like they, they it would have probably been very ferocious, very territorial. Um, even coming close to its territory, no doubt it was going to have a full-on attack to make sure that nothing harms it or whatever it's protecting within its territory. Now, as far as the history tied to this creature, you have to go back to the 1800s for its first quote-unquote purported discovery. It's at a place called Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Rhinelander, Wisconsin, by the way, even today has so adopted this hodag that they've named it essentially like it's the official mascot of the city and they they even call themselves the home of the hodag but I'll talk about that more here in a few minutes so in the late 1800s that's when newspapers all of a sudden started describing what was people encountering this strange creature um, so much so to the point and nobody had any proof of it but so much so to the point that there was this guy named Eugene Shepard who decided he wanted to go ahead and try to capture this creature and I say that loosely because he's the one that actually instigated these reports uh, with regards to uh, the sightings of this creature and the nature of this creature and the description of it it's important because he's actually uh, someone there in the Wisconsin area that was known to be a prankster of some sort so why everyone took him seriously I don't know but the newspapers did he reported it they uh, placed it in newspapers and then he garnered so much interest that he was able to actually get a small group of people together to capture the animal. Now I don't know if these people were in on it most likely they were when it comes to this hoax because here's what happened next um, there was two instances involving their captures of the hodag. First instance was of a dead hodag. Apparently what happened was I don't know if they uh, used dynamite specifically to kill it, but they did use dynamite to harm it in some way, and eventually it killed the beast. So what happened was they did something with the dynamite, it killed the beast, and when that happened, then they were able to show, especially him, being media savvy that he was, to the newspapers that he had... Uh, uh, 
got got one essentially, but it was dead. He called it the fiercest, strangest, most frightening monster ever to set razor sharp claws on Earth, and it became extinct after its main food source, which were curiously enough all white bulldogs, had to be white bulldogs. I don't know why became scarce in the area so he was using that photograph in the media to again state and proclaim that he's the one that captured a dead one and he was able to show it off because this is what happened next that truly led down the path of it being revealed as a hoax so apparently a dead one wasn't enough um, he wanted he needed more proof because I don't know if he was selling tickets for people to see the dead one but it wasn't garnering enough interest so he set across on another expedition this was in 1896 he brought along some other people some quote unquote bear wrestlers and and according to him, all they had to do was they placed a thick amount of chloroform on the end of some long pole. They probably had like a bunch of rags or a bunch of clothing of some sort tied to the end of that pole and then just dipped it in chloroform. And according to them, they had found the cave where this hodag lived. And when they went into that cave, as brave as they were, they went straight into it and then were able to use the chloroform to put the hodag down. And so essentially they captured one alive right then and there. And as proof of this, he proudly proclaimed once again to the media this picture, what you're looking Looking at here it showcases the men he brought with this expedition all of them pointing whatever they have axes I think I even see like some long rifles uh, others have some kind of other weapons knives all of them towards this purported live hodag as it's surrounded by them and cannot do anything but just stand still so he used that picture to try to showcase to everyone guess what all these reports I've been telling you about, it's real, and I have it, and it's ready to go, and I'm going to go ahead and set up a brand new fair of sorts, so that way you could go ahead and see it for a small fee, of course. So that's where his business interest came, because what had happened next is he set up a fair called the Oneida County Fair, and he started to charge a small fee for people to come out and see this real life, again, purported real life captured hodag. It worked too because this guy Shepard was able to have thousands of people come by to that fair just to see this hodag and I would have loved to have been in that time to see what he did because you could probably imagine that he pulled all the tricks normally associated with these shady fairs from the past eras where it was probably in some tent of some sort but that tent was heavily secluded really dark um, probably a lot of displays just cheesy displays leading up to the captured hodag and so that whenever let's say if you were a patron and you walked through all of this the setting was there in place until finally when you saw the hodag you probably were only given a couple of seconds to see this creature in its dwelling and it was probably heavily obscured by the environment or whatever environment he set up there to ensure again that his hoax wasn't outright displayed and then that was it the people saw it they paid their fare and then it grew in terms of popularity but it continued for a little while people would come in and he even uh, prolonged this charade by actually tying some wires straight into the hodag so that way every now and then whoever was lucky enough to come by and see the hodag at the right moment he would pull some strings or have someone pull some strings tied to the creature and it would make it move or make it seem like it moved and no doubt it again in the environment they were in and everything being so dark it probably scared the crap out of them and it just drew more interest uh, interest from others they would probably come out stating i saw it you know it was it was moving and then that would even produce more interest in people paying to try to see this thing even more unfortunately for him the charade was up whenever and this is kind of ironic all the media reports tied to this hodag it eventually reached the Smithsonian Institution in Washington and so a group of scientists there decided uh, they probably of course saw the hoax as obvious as it was decided that they wanted to go ahead and inspect this discovery and no doubt they were going to use like their government or the scientific department um, 
clearance to try to see it in person and personally inspect it up front. And so when he heard about this, he knew the gig was up, and then that was it. He, he proclaimed, I don't know if he told the media or if he told someone else, but it eventually word quickly got around that this hodag was 100% a hoax. By the way, I think you might be looking at the actual creature that was used within the fair, like the actual one that people pay to see and go in that fair. So um, if this is it, that's great. You can see it, but I'm, I'm not sure 100%. But it does seem like it altogether. Now, at, at the very beginning, I was mentioning that this thing, uh, the mystery surrounding the hodag, even though it was proven a hoax, it eventually took on a life of its own. And it became ingrained in the city. Here's proof of it. Um, to this day, you can go there to Rhinelander, Wisconsin. And the history tied to this hodag proved to be so important that they have numerous places named after it. Uh, for example, the official mascot of the... Rhinelander High School is the Hodag. Also, the Hodag has been tied to several businesses and organizations. Uh, you can go straight to the website, the main website of Rhinelander, and they'll proudly proclaim themselves as the home of the Hodag. And then on top of that, you're looking at this. This is a gigantic fiberglass sculpture created by one of the local artists there and it's a, and it was made directly as a dedication to the hodag and further confirming its official stance it's right there in the chamber of commerce the rhinelander area chamber of commerce so this is not like say in front of someone's private home or someone's private business no this is actually on what you could call government land and it's there for everyone to come it's pretty popular too because it draws thousands of visitors each year and people can come by and read the history associated with the hodag and then on top of that every year there seems to be a country festival of some sort and guess what it's called the hodag country festival so pretty interesting stuff again um, so much history tied to this creature that was proven to be a hoax but still it made its landmark within that area not only that but the hodag has appeared in several other pop culture areas too uh, apparently it's part of several video games there's a role-playing game called bestiary or bestiary 3 that came out and the hodag is a monster there there's another video game called magical diary and he appears as one of the villains or monsters there too even scooby-doo uh, there's an episode of the series there it's called scooby-doo mystery incorporated and it's called the hodag of horror and he appears in it as well so quite fascinating again to see this creature that was made 100 percent from just falseness and cheatingness and pe and someone just trying to scam people out of their hard-earned money um, and and try to make it seem like it's a real-life creature how to this day it's still around uh, around that place so if anyone has any more information that I have not covered here it would be great to hear but what do you guys think the hodag uh, interesting stuff no a nice little piece of American history tied to again these cryptids um, involving these uh, lumberjack tales so all right everybody thanks again as always take care